Howdy, want to have a conversation with you about prepping in the mainstream and the dangers that it poses to you. So, I do have a few notes written down in my handy dandy little notebook here. And uh, we're going to cover kind of a couple of different areas of it. So, um, as you are probably aware, and while we do so, I'm going to be enjoying my coffee. Folgers 100% Colombian with sugar and creamer because, yeah, I like candy coffee. Uh, and I've got a glass cigar that I'm going to puff on here. Um, it's filled with uh, the natural material that I grow and cultivate myself. And um, I'm going to be enjoying, I can't remember the name of this. It's like Heisenberg or something like that. It's called a lemon sour. It's basically a lemon blue slushy. So that's good stuff. And then this is my homebrew sherb um, from, uh, well... Not from me, it's homebrew, but uh, there's a company called Jimmy the Juice Man. My favorite bought juice ever, and that's Sherb, and it tastes like Sherbert ice cream. And so one day I got bored, and this is a tip to uh, you prepping vapors out there. Um, one day I got bored, and I decided to throw it in chat GPT. Uh, can you give me the recipe for Jimmy the Juice Man Sherb? And I will be damned if... Uh, chat gpt didn't spit out a recipe for me it gave me a couple of different brands of different flavor of the different flavors to try so you know it's not it's not spot on but it's close enough that i i can't put it down so <laughs> it's close enough i can't put it down and uh if i ever get the money to buy the other flavorings to see if i can fiddle with it a little bit to get it spot on i will but uh that's a tip to you uh vaping preppers out there so if you make your own juice, and hopefully you do, if you're a prepper and you're not making your own juice, are you a prepper? Mm. So you need to be making your own coils, your own wicks, your own juice. And I'm just speaking to the heart there, right? Uh, so ChatGPT can help you with those recipes. I thought it was awesome. And as far as I know, you can still get all the materials here in the United States. You can still get the nicotine. You can still get everything you need, the flavorings, obviously. Um, so, yeah, something to think about. Um, I just got bit by something that I was, uh, oh, I don't know what that was, but it got me good. Yikes, man. Yikes, yikes. That thing, whatever it was, did not like the fact that I put my finger on it. <laughs> Damn, yo. Okay. So, I am not editing that out. That was actually pretty damn funny. I don't know what the hell that was, man. I have no idea what that was, but that, and I don't see a mark, I don't see a single mark or nothing, but holy hell, that thing, it, man, yikes. So, anyway, I mean, it's like, it doesn't really hurt now. It's still got a little bit of a sting to it, but man, for that split second, and it was tiny, it wasn't that big. Anyway, uh, so we're going to start off, we're going to talk about, um, there's been a few, and I'm sure there's probably been even more, a uh, few shows, if you will, that have uh, recently came out and uh, on prepping, and we're going to talk about that a little bit, and then we're going we're gonna, to uh, continue the conversation on with further implications that the whole popularity of prepping is uh, is causing it's becoming a status symbol right and there's entire brand identities right that's being built on this stuff it's absolutely absurd so we're going to start out with uh the the three shows that i have written down here so june 28th dr phil um came out with a show um prep to survive prepared or paranoid and I know there's been several prepper channels that have come out with videos and they've talked about it some have been like meh some have been you know uh, picking and choosing their favorite ones like that they've had on their show or whatever and I'm going to be honest all three of them on the Dr. Phil show sucked all three of them they were all egocentric individuals, and I wouldn't trust a single one of them. The first guy, I mean, that should be really obvious why you wouldn't want to trust him. 
And I'm kind of struggling to remember a lot of the details on the second guy that was on there. Um, but then you had the guy that, uh, then you had the guy that bought the, uh, that, that started uh, Fortitude Ranch or whatever. Folks, and, and you do you, boo. But be weary of trusting situations like that. Um, you'd be much better off quietly putting together your own little community uh, than you would something like that. Because, you know, you've got so many threats and possibilities of threats right from the get-go. For one, what if the guy's not a stand-up dude? What if the guy's intent is to take people for everything that they got and when the time comes, when the true SHTF happens, you know, they have their buddies come out there and fight all of you off that have invested and paid for all of that time, right? You got to be careful of stuff like that. Also, the fact that known places like that are going to be targets. There's no two ways about it. And look, here's the thing. It's only a matter of time. If you have to keep battling, it's only a matter of time while they whittle people away before your team is small enough that you can't fend it off anymore. Only a matter of time. So be very weary of that mindset. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, especially if you live like in a small community like this, I'm going to tell you to work with your community. 100%. Now, if you're in a big city and stuff like that, I don't know what to tell you other than get the hell out of the big city. It's, in my opinion, is common sense. Get the hell out of the big city. I mean, we're 30 miles from St. Louis. And St. Louis is a disaster. We all know that. We're 30 miles from St. Louis, right? But I don't know that you would consider this like even a suburb. I don't think you'd consider it a suburb. Uh, St. Louis, obviously, is Missouri. This is Illinois. There's a river between us. And, you know, um, I wouldn't really call this a suburb of any kind. Um, it's not rural living, but at the same time, um, you know, a town roughly around 10,000 people. And uh, there's no other town, like, right on top of us, you know. Um, so, there's that show. And mm, egocentrics. The problem with these shows is they give you unrealistic looks at things. And that's the problem with these shows. They mislead people. And that's, that's dangerous. That's very dangerous. The other one was uh, another one here, 60 Minutes, uh, reporting on doomsday scenarios. And that was put out like seven days ago. And, um, and so the deal with that is... Uh, it was mainly just uh, recovering old things that they had covered. And it, it hit on things like pandemics. And it hit on things like uh, climate change. Um, and it was just going through the past, you know, different past content that they had had on their, their show. And um, that's pretty much what it amounted to. I'm, I'm thinking more than anything... The whole 60 minutes deal was about because prepping is now in the mainstream and gaining popularity. Uh, it was an easy, you know, it was an easy hit for them, so to speak. I honestly think that's what 60 minutes angle was. And then this WELT, the German publication, Inside the Prepper Movement, and, um, mm, I didn't watch it super duper duper close, but I did watch it and pay attention to it, you know, and a lot of it was based around this dude that was going to bug out with his neon green pack cover. I mean, again, and it's crazy, right? I'm not, I'm not joking. I am not joking. I will put a link to all three of these. Um, two of them will be YouTube. The 60 Minutes and the Inside the, uh, the WELT, Inside the Prepper Movement, will be YouTube links. And then the Dr. Phil one will be the link to whatever website it is at Merit Plus or something that he's on. Uh, it's free to sign up and, uh, and it was free to watch episode 63, which was his preparedness video. Um, 
I'll put a link to all three of them in the uh, description and in the first comment. And like I say, on the WELT thing, the dude literally had this big hiking pack, right? And it was, uh, you know, olive drab green kind of color, the, the pack itself. And he had this bright neon green uh, cover, like rain cover, that was over the top of it. And he's... <laughs> He's waddling outside of his uh, apartment, bugging out, practicing the bug out, right? 60 minutes, nothing there was really helpful for you. The other two was not only unhelpful, uh, it was bad advice. So, and that's what you're going to find going on to kind of the next, I haven't even enjoyed any of my, my glass cigar yet. Um, hang on. I um I want to continue on with talking about the YouTube preparedness angle. And that's not any better, folks. Uh, Zombie Farmer come out with a, a good video today calling some of it out. And I'm not normally a big fan of Zombie Farmer. But uh, he, he made a good video today. Because it's ridiculous. Right? Like he, like he points out, you know, you've got the usual suspects, the same channels that are always put in the, the scary titles and the scary thumbnails. And, you know, we're talking full spectrum survival. We're talking, um, we're talking, um, ah, Canadian prepper, stuff like that. But even the prepared homestead is bad. Prepper dog has gotten bad. Um, it's like, who does... Out of these prepper channels, who's doing prepping content anymore? Because all I see, for the most part, is a bunch of fear mongering going on. They're doing they're they're doing a piss poor job, mind you, but they're doing news. They're doing a very piss poor job on news, and it's ridiculous. It is truly, truly ridiculous. Um. One thing that I want to point out, and, and a, a lot of the reason why it's ridiculous, is because they're chasing those numbers, right? Whether it be subscribers, whether it be dollar bills, they're chasing, chasing those numbers. And the sad thing is, is you only got a handful of people out there that even know what they're talking about. Today, today, Angry Prepper made a video about a... Uh, a water filter is an air mobility rescue, air mobile rescue or something like that. $2,000 water filter. And he's telling you about how your group needs this. This is, this is one of the best inventions made for preppers. Dude, let me tell you how this works. They gave him a free one. So he would go on video telling you how you needed one. That's how that works. I guarantee you that if that stopped, if the freebie stopped, there would be a lot less items that these prepping channels would be telling you that you had to have. That's the truth of it. That is a truth of it. Because I guarantee you Guarantee you that if the shoe was on the other foot with Jason, Angry Prepper, if somebody else would present the item to him, not to give to him, but, oh, dude, you got to get this. I'm pretty sure the words out of Jason's mouth would be something like, are you fucking kidding me? Right? Probably somewhere close. But, I mean... <laughs> first off, you got to understand, this guy got his first jump from Doomsday Preppers. That's where he got his name thrown in the ring. Now, and I guarantee you if you look at his demographics, I guarantee you that like well over 90% of his demographics are white. Why? I'm going to just be straight up honest about it. 
<laughs> because he's the white people's token black pepper. Why is his demographics with black folks so bad? Because he's an Uncle Tom. I didn't do it. I'm just being straight with you. This guy will sell his soul over and over and over again for personal benefit. And this is something that people really need to start recognizing, something that people really need to see because there are a lot of people that are being taken on bad paths because of uh, profiteering. This water filter is, is a great example of that. You could build something like this water filter and cut it out with the seven, sta seven stages of blah, blah, blah. One of them is just a damn screen at the bottom of the hose. Okay? That, I guarantee you, and I didn't pay that, that close attention, but there was a, a UV light inside of, the, uh, inside of one of the filter units. I guarantee that UV light's probably another stage. A, a stage of filtering, right? See, when people do stuff like that, I become very suspicious of the product. Not that I don't think it won't work. Not that I think that it won't meet the expectations that they say it will. I think it will. But for $2,000, does it wipe my ass too? I mean, it is a water filter. Can I double it as a bidet? I mean, that's close to wiping my ass. I mean, spray my ass clean at $2,000? It better be spraying my ass clean, yo. I, but they gave him one, and it hurt my head to even listen to him try to read the words off the piece of paper about this device. He knows nothing about this stuff. Nothing. But he's telling you how it's one of the best inventions made for preppers, and you, your group of people, need to get one. Does anybody else see anything flawed with that? Because I do. And if you don't see something flawed with that, might I suggest you look at that. You kind of work on that. Because, man, again, I'm not saying it's a bad product. I'm saying for $2,000, it better spray my ass off. Because I'm pretty sure that I could build one for like, less than 200 bucks that would filter just as good as that would all right with an attachment to spray my ass off just saying i can draw you up a diagram <laughs> hang on so it's not all bad though um, Dirty Civilian put out a video today and he talked about some thermal optics. Okay, that's a stand up channel, stand up guys. And, uh, you know, they really did a good job of laying out, you know, when, where, and why. And, um, you know, and, and then at the end of the video, they were like, look, and they went through a list of things. They were like, make sure you've got this, this, and this, and this taken care of before you even think about buying thermals. And, uh, I mean, they're real. They're based. And I've said that before, and I'll continue to say that. They are very based gentlemen, and they do a very good job. They're not out there just trying to, you know... In fact, that's what they were doing, was trying to show you a cheaper alternative that was, I believe, and I think their opinion was, better than what you could get here in the U.S., for much, much more expensive. Um, so, again, really, really good video. Guys are based. They always seem to be based. Uh, their content's enjoyable, enjoyable to watch because they, they throw some humor in there. But because of all this, you know, I'm not going to sit here and fear monger you and sit there and be like, you know, um, all these mainstream videos are being made about preparedness and you better be prepared because you know they're trying it's it's predictive programming and it's i'm not gonna alex jones you yo hang on
you got YouTube channels. Like I say, the Prepared Homestead's been horrible about it. Um, Prepper Dog's been horrible about it. Canadian Prepper's a given. Full Spectrum Survival. You, you've got a list of Prepper channels. Channels that... Um, it's, it's, it's about to happen. It's, it's, you know... It's almost like every day they're saying, Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And they're doing that because it gets the clicks. But the thing with it is, is it's only getting clicks by drive-bys, right? Sure, you've got their, um, their people that idolize, you know. Um, the heck? Um, oh. Sure, you've got people that idolize some of these individuals, and that is not a good thing. Um, but the people that are clicking day in day out most of them aren't subscribers and if they would look at their analytics they they would learn that most of them aren't subscribers what are they drive buys a lot of people it was in the suggested feed so they reached over and they clicked it right um i have a number of youtube channels that i'm subscribed to that i barely watch their content but yet I see them produce content every single day, day in and day out, and I barely ever click on it. Why? Because most of the time, it's the same bullshit. And so there are a lot of people, and, and my channel included, there are a lot of people, as far as this is concerned, there are a lot of people that are subscribed to channels that they don't, like, quote-unquote, religiously watch the content, right? I love Ben with Suspicious Observers. I ain't got a bad thing to say about Ben puts out a video every morning do I watch it very rarely and I'm just being real with you is it not worth my time oh it's worth it I mean it's it's there is nothing bad I can say and he's not saying the same thing every day right if there was a channel that I should be paying attention to day in and day out that would be the channel and I still don't okay the individuals are drive-bys that are that are rocking those numbers up and in, in many cases the algorithm is pushing these individuals why because they're they're promoting products right hey you know part of YouTube's job whether it be for themselves or whether it be for a wider audience um, part of their job is to keep that money flowing right that advertising keeping that money flowing and even if the advertising isn't going directly to YouTube, as long as they're assisting and keeping that economy moving, the longer and the better the economy moves, the more money that YouTube can make, right? So they don't want to piss in their own Cheerios. You got to understand how this works. And so if you're promoting products, if you're going out every single day making videos with titles and thumbnails that, that get people in a tizzy, that, you know, if, if you can engage an audience like that, YouTube is going to push it through their algorithms. It does not mean it's good content. In fact, it's quite the contrary. It does not. Again, the prepper channels aren't talking about prepping unless it's something you can add to your cart. That's it. They're not telling you how to actually do anything anymore. They're telling you how you can buy stuff, and they're trying to instill you with fear so that you do. That's the long and the short of it. I mean, I don't know what else to say on it. I mean, looking over, it, going on 24 minutes now. I don't know what else to say on it. Beware, because I do, do fully believe that preparedness is going to become further and further into the mainstream. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Because you've already got the vultures out in force. And they're doing their thing. And it's not helpful. Beware. Learn discernment. Do not idolize anybody. Do not trust anyone that flatters you. And do not trust a salesman. If somebody's selling you a product, automatically be suspicious of their claims. Hope you have a great day. I hope uh, I hope you don't get burnt by the prepping industry. I truly do. Shalom.